Well, I've finished my last project, which is this one over here. It's ready to go. I've had shakedown rides on it now, and I've sorted all the little baby bugs out of it. I have my logbook of uh, the special interest. Well, actually, it's a vintage registration for this one, and look, I'm happy with it. I'm going to take it to bike shows and and just just ride it every now and again. It's just it's quite a handful to ride. It's not you forget how hard old bikes were to ride. Like an example is you you shut the throttle off, right? And you expect the motor to stop, but no, nah, not on this one. It keeps going, dum, 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 dum. So it just pushes you forward, and and you put your hands on the brakes, and you expect something to happen, but no, it doesn't. Those drum brakes, they're not, certainly not discs, so your braking distances go out. The bike wants to ride on. It's just, it's enjoyable, like that's what I used to do when I was a kid, but you just forget how far modern bikes have come compared to what they are now. So you sit there at the traffic lights and the motor's going tun, 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 and it just stops. And then, oh my God, so hopefully a kick fires up first, kicks up the traffic is going off and you're sitting there and I just, all that stuff we used to enjoy when you were young. My next one is this one here, this bike I've had since brand new, the Versus. But I've had it and it was all good, like, you know, I bought it and, and the first thing you got to do is modify it to suit me because I had my own personal preferences and the motor, of course, wasn't going good enough, so I had to do some stuff with that. So I've just, I've changed a lot over the years, but that was all like eight years, eight, nine years ago and I've forgotten a lot of things I've done, so I've got to, I've got to put the bike back to standard because I'm going for, on this next year, trip around Australia and I need my fuel economy back. I think I remember that used to do about 350 kilometres out of a tank. And I've been told that there's certain sections that we'll be going on that you need to get 350 kilometres out of a tank to make it to the next service station. There's big distances involved, so I've got to put it back to standard. There are a few things I've pulled my drawer out. And I have an O2 sensor that has to go back in, and um, that's okay because that has a lean out mode that if you've been driving along at a steady pace for a while, it detects that, that you're doing that and then it just drops it down to a leaner one. And that's good for touring. So so that's got to go back in, but I've currently got the special little plug that loops that out. I've got a, uh, I'm going to have a look at that one. That's a, 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 an emissions thing. These here, a bit of wax on there. These here are secondary throttle bodies that I, that I took off. Now, the idea of those is when you accelerate, they, they're above it and they, they go with it. And if you accelerate too hard, open it right up, they say, oh, no, not yet, you'll, you'll make it too lean. Well, I got rid of those straight away and got a, um, a power commander in there with the accelerator pumps so that when I open it now, it squirts petrol in there, fills the lean-out hole and off you go. You've got good power. So I'm going to put all that back together. I've done some ram airing in there. Just all sorts of things. I'll get around to doing it. I'll do a video on all the things I have to do to bring it back to standard. I'm going to keep those exhausts exhaust. I should be able to get away with the... If I do everything else, I don't think it'll be too lean with those exhausts on there. I, uh, there's a few other things. I made a, I made a, um, <clears throat> an oiler, a chain oiler there. It's still the original chain and it's still in good condition. And because I'm a cheapskate, I made it myself. It's a vacuum operated thing. and It's been working just fine for eight years, but now, now it leaks slightly, so... I have to pull that apart and find out where the problem is and there's other things I need to, to, to change back to standards so the motor gives me good economy so I'll do a, uh, I'll do a, a video on that. I want to I wanna get a phone holder for here. I've already got my heated handlebars so not that I'll need that around the top end but we'll start off in winter down the bottom which is where I live so I'll need it then and then then it'll be too much heat and then it'll be the time it gets to WA it'll probably might start to get cold again so all in all, I will work on this one and do a, do a videos on the different things I need to do. Nice bike apart from that. I'm going to just do um, pictures of the different things I've changed and whether I have to change them back again. So this is just a little recording of what I've done over time. The first off is the top box on the back here. That used to be red in there. I pulled that out, cut my own green one in just to make it blend in with the bike. I made some indicator extensions that plug in underneath the seat there and I just put them in the back pocket because when the panniers are on there they cover over the regular indicators and that makes it all nice to be seen. This is the back of the bike and you can see the green and the red there and by the night time when you look at it 
it looks like that. And I used to sell them at one stage, this little kitty, and call them Tioli eyes, but that was back in the early days. These are just your regular stand bobbins you put on, they'll stay on the bike. But I also made another stand here. There's a hole that runs through the motor behind that side cover there. And that allows, if you put it up on that, that allows the bike to be off the ground front and rear tyres both together. You can't really see what's going on here, but they used to be like a 10mm bolt that went through there. And I got a better quality 8mm bolt and got a tube and offset that tube, drilled it through. So that when it sits in there, it moves the bolt back, so which, which lowered the bike 25mm. Added a fender extender there to stop the rocks from going up into the motor. Plus my Ixel exhaust, I love those. They really suit that bike, so I'm definitely keeping those ones. Because I'm a little bit tall, I've had to lower and change and lower my brake lever so that my foot just goes across when I brake. When I first got the bike, I was doing a lot of dirt roads and I was throwing all rocks up there, so I made this belly pan out of aluminium, bent it and shaped it. It took me a long time to get it to where it wouldn't vibrate, sat there, all the right places to protect minimum amount of material, which I've got it there, it's been there for eight years and hasn't hurt it at all. I got a clutch actuator arm out of ER6N, which is basically a spare one, and extended it out. I think it was 15 or 20 mil, and which makes the clutch much lighter now. Those Kawasaki frame sliders there, they're an option, and I bought them, and I read on forums how people were saying, when you fall over, they just break off straight away. So I turned mine over, and I filled it with aerodite, plus I put a really big bolt in there, which, which there was a hole there to bolt it through. As you can see there, the bolt head. So now that thing's holding on there for good. That bit of silver underneath the indicator there, that's just tape, but that's just sort of signify the ram air. It breaks up all the black, breaks up, it makes it look nicer, but... Underneath there is the ram air. That, that's a plastic cover that goes over the radiator so all the cold air doesn't get mixed with the radiator. It's separate and goes underneath the tank. I like really good brakes and the standard ones are a bit wooden so I got these off for an R1. Well, these ones are actually of a Hayabusa and they brake very nice now. Plus double brake lines from the master cylinder there and the Hayabusa master cylinder. The whole lot's very sensitive now and very nice. The chain order, I have to pull that whole lot apart and re-look at that, see what's going on. The power commander, that, that's got to come out and woeful for fuel economy. I've got a film over all the paint, so that just one of those protective films that you can't put a key through. So, And you're on the edges there, on the front mudguard. It just protects all the leading edges and my knees and stuff like that. Secondary throttle bodies, they'll have to go back in and I'll do a video of that. These are the, the snorkels that go in the airbox. I've made bigger ones and they have a whole thing they've got to do doing and I'll record all that. That's an emission stuff, I might leave that. I put uh, heated hand grips on there, it makes a big difference to the bike, especially down in Tassie where I live. When I first got the bike I had a lot of noise between my shoulders and my ears, or just a lot of wind noise, turbulence there. So I was making my own screens, really tall ones up the top of my head, real short ones. None of them really work. Then I've got these little trick little screen adjusters here and, and have the screen now as low as position and, and it hits me in the top of the chest, which means I'll get clean air through underneath the helmet and my shoulders and it's nice and quiet now. Cable tie around the forks just as a telltale to see how much travel you're using. Also, I put rim tape on there. It really suits the bike. It makes the bike look nice. Because I lowered the back end of the bike, I had to lower the front end of the bike to suit to try and keep it in balance. Also behind that, that top panel there, there's a larger horn, so it got some real noise to it. That little rack there, the lower one, it's got tape on it now just to protect it, but I made that by hand. I, I got some steel, sand, bent it, put some ends on there, and that was difficult enough, but getting the other side of the match was even harder, but I got it done, and it keeps the panniers off the bike now. That O2 sensor has to go back on the bike just for the lean-out mode. I put a big foot on the side stands so when I go camping it doesn't sink in the ground and just a plastic protecting strip that sort of hangs down there to protect the shock absorber from the rear wheel spray. When I got the bike there wasn't much on the market for radiator protector so I made my own and this is just expanded mesh and, and from that direction you can see the wind goes in nicely but from where the road tyre fixed up the stuff it's just a wall of mesh and it's worked perfectly ever since I put it on. I've wired in a battery tether because when I'm not using the bike I just keep the battery topped up all the time. A set of KTM 950 SM handguards pretty well wraps up what I've done to the changes now. I've just got a bit of work to do to fix it all up.